thank you for being a part of Kamari Golf. Um, I kind of wanted to jump in tonight and do some things because a lot of people don't realize that uh, we had a great event in our uh, golf group this weekend, uh, this past weekend in Nashville. Uh, there's a two-part series. What, the first series we're going to be interviewing. Uh, well, we we interview um, the golf PGA golf pro in California. His name is Patrick uh, Harris. And let me tell you, this guy is awesome. He knows his stuff. Look cocky, which is good in golf. Uh, but it was an awesome experience. It was a great event. I encourage all individuals to go and play in the Ted Rhodes uh, uh, golf tournament. Uh, if you can play, you have a chance to win. If you can't play, you got a chance to win. Um, you know, they do skins games, but it's really cool because some of everybody out there and people really enjoy themselves. But before we get into Ted Rhodes, I wanted to talk about two quick things. One is the fact that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about golf etiquette. The second one is would you rather be a great driver or a great putter? Now, let's talk about etiquette first. No matter how good of a golfer you are or how great uh, or how poor of a golfer you are, uh, there are just some things that I think that needs to be looked at when you're on the golf course. One, if you are having a bad day and the rest of your group is moving along, just go along with it. Just pick up the ball periodically and just understand it's not your day. Keep it moving. Uh, a lot of people try and just wear out the golf course and they know that they are not having a great day. and 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 it, and it just keeps it, it destroys not only your confidence but it, it destroys a lot of the other things that other golfers are trying to accomplish for that day uh what's up chris man how you doing man just hollering at you but uh you know just be respectful on the golf course you know if, if you if you're still in the learning stage people that are have been playing for a while don't mind understanding that. But when you're in a learning stage and you're holding up the course in that situation, either let people through or work with folks and you go from that. Uh, <laughs> Jinx, hey man, I ain't got no beds with you. I can't hang with you no more. Uh, but the other thing is, you know, a lot of people say about would you, you people get out on the golf course and they want to just smash the ball. So they will think that driving is where you make your money. Personally, I'd rather be a great putt. If I can sink a 30 or 40 foot putt, I know that's money. I can, heck, if I, I can put my driver up, it don't always mean a whole lot when you're on the golf course. But if you can sink a 40 or 50 foot putt, man, that's money in the bank every time. Uh, but those two things I wanted to talk briefly about because. I don't think a lot of people understand that just being cool and, and and having good etiquette on the golf course helps maintain friends, helps keep things moving, and it makes the experience enjoyable in that situation. Uh, Brian, you used to, you you probably still are. Uh, you you can put from about eight hundred yards away. That's the type of putter you are. I remember that from a long time ago. And even today, so you know it is what it is. But uh, now, one of the things that I wanted to go back to is the Ted Rhodes tournament. Uh, I played in it, enjoyed it. Uh, it wasn't that expensive. I think it was like one hundred sixty-five dollars or whatever. They had food. They had a good outing, and it was really, really good for the fact of giving back to the black community. They support uh, Fisk University golf team. And it was just a good feeling to be out on the course supporting that situation. So uh, I have an interview that I did with, I mean, what are the chances you run in? In fact, 
I'm not going to ruin the video, but I did not realize that in the black community, there's only less than 1% of PGA professionals out of 40,000 that are PGA professionals. And that number hit me because, you know, that's an industry during the pandemic that just blew up and grew. Uh, so we're missing out, but there's a lot of us that play. Uh, so I just wanted to, I interviewed this PGA professional. He's a young guy, awesome interview as far as talking back and forth with him. So let me go ahead and just kind of give y'all an idea of what it was like to talk to this young man. So let's see what we can do to kind of get an idea of what this young man can do. So for my Kamari golfers, uh, we are in Nashville, Tennessee. We are playing in the Ted Rhodes Tournament. Now I will make all y'all go and Google Ted Rhodes because most of y'all just got blown away. We uh, played on the Ted Rhodes golf course today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let my black PG bro <laughs> introduce himself. Tell, it, tell us where you're from. Tell us the golf course you're teaching at and where you're at. And just give us a little information about yourself right now. Yes. All right. So uh, I'm Patrick Harris. Uh, I'm a PGA professional in uh, in Sacramento, California. Uh, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, not Birmingham. Birmingham. Not oh, Birmingham. not from my area. Yeah. What school? Just out of curiosity. Shades Valley High School. Oh. Yeah, Shades Valley. Mm -hmm. Northern Birmingham. Lord bless you. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is we want to talk a little bit about how you got into golf. Oh yeah. So my grandfather, he, he was actually uh, one of the golfers. Uh, he played on the U UGA tour. Okay. Uh, he played with Ted Rose. Charlie Help Zephyr. folks out. UGA. UGA, United Golfers Association. So for anyone who doesn't know that, yeah. that is the PGA tour for African-American golfers right. back in the 60s and 70s. Because we couldn't play. Yeah, we couldn't play. Uh, we had the Caucasian club. <laughs> there you so go. We, we, there you we go. had to create our own tour. So uh, you got involved with that. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so my grandfather, he, uh, he, he uh, started me into the game, but it wasn't until um, I saw Tiger win the 1997 Masters. The uh, only thing I do remember from that is just seeing the putt that he made on the final hole. Right. It looked pretty good. So, pretty good. So, uh, I saw a man that looked just like me, a black man looked just like me, uh, with uh, with a red shirt, black pants. I said it looks like a lot of fun. So, so, what is it? Okay, you know I got a bunch of questions hey, ask right, right now. <laughs> okay, ask all right, because, you know, you see PGA professionals, mm -hmm. and I don't think people really understand. You explained this to me a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different facets to being a PGA professional. Yes. So how did you go down this particular path, and what was a little bit of your background? Yeah, yeah, so uh, well, grew my background, I just uh, started off uh, by just saying I grew up playing National Junior Golf. Okay. Uh, so from 13 to 18, I was playing National Junior Golf. Uh, then I got a scholarship to Chicago State uh, in Illinois. And then after that, uh, I went over to uh, to University of Maryland Eastern Shore. I got my PGA credentials over there. Now, when you say your PGA credentials, that's going, mm -hmm. testing, Yep, you right, really, right? Riding, playing golf. And golf, then you golf. had to go play golf too, then. Mm -hmm. You couldn't yep. just. You can't just take a test and pass. Right? Yeah. You got to be able to show that you can play. Yeah, show that you can play. Uh, uh, I was in the program for four and a half years. Really? Yeah, so it's. That's almost like a college degree. Oh, no, it is a college degree. Okay, all right, all right. So, like, where are you now and what are you doing? Yeah, so I'm an independent contractor now. Uh, so I have my own golf facility. Uh, actually, I have my own golf facility, and also I work at another golf facility uh, in the Bay Area in uh, Pleasant Hill, California. So I do that uh, three days a week, and then work at my own spot two days a week. Um, so I no longer I used to be a director of instruction at a uh, at a uh, local public course in the area, uh, but I branched out because I, I gained I gained enough clientele. Ooh. Yeah, I gained enough clientele. To, to we got people's money. now. Yeah, we got people's now. Okay. Uh, Do you ever go to any of the tour events and oh, yeah. and and you know what is your interaction on some of the tour events? I guess. 
Yeah, yeah. So I've been to a few tour events. Uh, actually, I have some friends who play on tour. So uh, if they're in town, uh, I'll go to the event. Uh, so but my interaction uh, by just going to the event, uh, you just see how they play, how they attack the game. Uh, anything that you're trying to, to teach students or anything you're trying to teach yourself. Um, but it's all about what you're looking for. So when I go to a tour event, uh, I'm looking at, okay, uh, what are they like, um, like how are they scoring? Uh, are they placing the ball over here? Are they placing the ball over, over there? So you're looking at the strategy of the game yes. at that point. Yes, all the time. Okay. So we're going to cheat a second. Okay. All right. So you got a new golf, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you only got a few things that you can do to that person. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking you to give a lesson, but kind of what, what goes through your mind of what you're looking for on that new golfer to help them to progress a little bit? Yeah, well, first things first, I want to know what uh, he or she can do. Uh, I right. want to know if they played any other sports, if they played basketball, tennis, soccer, football, baseball. To get that athletic yeah, thought process. Yeah, to get that athletic thought okay. process because I want to know what they can actually do. Uh, so once I see that, they tell me they say play baseball. All right, that's not too far away from golf. Right. Yeah. So they got the swing. They have the swing. Yeah. Okay. So instead of swinging more across, they swing more down. Okay. Yeah. So um, that's the first thing. So I find out their natural abilities, and then I work with that natural ability. So the first thing that I'm going to teach anybody is grip, stance, posture, setup, alignment, the fundamentals. If you can't attain the fundamentals, you can't attain any part of the. Would you say that one of the things that a lot of amateurs miss that have been playing for a while, but haven't really seen any progress is understanding the importance of that pre-shot routine oh, yeah. and seeing the same thing every time. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you're not ever going to see the same thing every time. But you get where I'm coming. Yeah, from. I get where you're coming yeah. from. But the pre-shot routine, I think that's very important. Um, so, when, uh, so say, um, say if you're playing. Uh, you have to have a good mental game to have a good physical game because it's all about the distance between. You mean you gotta have something up here? Yeah, you gotta have something up there, man. Wow. Because actually, your mind is size and your body follows. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if you're not, if you're just out there hacking, mm -hmm. and you never put it in your mind that this is something that you need to concentrate on, you're gonna pretty much continue hacking. Yes. Uh, so it's about where you're putting your focus. Are you putting your focus saying I don't want to head into the water? Or are you saying, or are you putting your focus into saying? I want to, you know, put it on this Execute side of the Execute this shot this way. Exactly. So it all uh, depends on where you're putting your focus. So, you know, I had to get a little insight mm -hmm. for folks on the strategy of the game from you, okay? Yeah. Now, you know, my big big question before we wrap up, because mm -hmm. I don't want to take too much of your time here. Yeah, all right. Um, Ted Rose, mm -hmm. how'd you get involved in this? Yeah, so um, social media. Uh, so uh, Miss Peggy and Tiffany, uh, Miss Peggy, who's uh, Ted Rose's daughter, mm -hmm. and then Tiffany is a granddaughter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I had I had both of them on Facebook. Uh, we were just friends on Facebook, but we really didn't make any contact. Right. Uh, you know, because we all just had mutual friends. But uh, they just saw all the stuff I was posting, and um, I guess they liked what they saw. Uh, they just uh, sent me a message one day, and we exchanged numbers and. Uh, next thing you know, they said they wanted me to help out with the tournament, and they kind of figured out my background from Google and other sources. And um, yeah, they they basically took me up under their wing and asked me to come. So in the time that you you're fairly young, just being honest, yeah, okay. Yeah. In the time that you've been in the game, have you seen more and more black professionals in golf? Black PGA professionals? Yeah. Uh, I would say I have seen some but i know there can be a lot more because, we need more yeah because i'll say this there's 127 uh black pj professionals that's it yeah i'm number 97. so how many are current out there right now pj professionals yeah. in general 40,000. Hmm. yeah so 40,000. you know you just hurt me with a number right yeah i know i did yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's not even a percent no it's not and wow yeah, so yeah, we have a lot of work. <laughs> look, look, look. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, on camera, yeah. I just had a wow moment. Yep. And then, you know, one of the things that we got involved in, a uh, group out of Birmingham decided to come up and play. Mm -hmm. You know, there are not a lot of black courses or courses named after black people. No, uh, Ted Rose <laughs> is one of the few. Right. Yeah. And in Ennisbrook, I believe, is one that's yeah. owned by the black female. Mm -hmm. And there are several in the upper north area, yeah. north central. Yeah, I'm saying Midwest one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So, what's your next step? What are you, yeah. what are you planning on well, doing? Actually, I'm selling it for a uh, week in and week out, I uh, teach. Uh, so, but my next step uh, for me is since I already have my own spot, my own facility to where I teach at, is to expand. Uh, so, my ultimate goal is to have my own golf facility with acres on it. Um, okay. You know, so like a probably a three to five hole facility, but also good hitting base, indoor facility uh, to where I can do work, and then also keep on getting my name out there and just to keep on getting better. Do you have any current pros on tour? Uh, actually, not on tour. All right, but my friend Harold Barner. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. He uh, good friend since uh, since high school. Okay. Yeah. That's my now. That's my dog right there. Yeah. I like watching him because he 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 has the same characteristics as Tiger as far as just that desire. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't mind talking a little smack too. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking <laughs> Look, talk a little smack. Yep. Yep. And he has developed a wonderful relationship with Michael Jordan. Yeah, yes. Uh in fact, uh Harold, just letting you know. Don't mind if you happen to want to let me know about those purple and gold shirts that you've been sporting. Uh, not that I would know anything about that, but we love those purple and gold shorts that you put on uh, the tour, and you look good. So, uh, so how's that little relationship go? I was good. Um, you know, I don't talk to him as uh, as much as I used to. You know, he's more busy, uh, yeah. and I'm of course more busy now. Um, but if we see each other or, you know, say if we see each other on social media, we we'll always say what's up or uh, just checking in with each other. But um, but sometimes I ask him a question about how to uh, uh, like attain a certain shot and sometimes he'll ask me like, Hey, what do I need to do or something like that? Uh, somewhat, yeah. He'll, yeah he'll, he'll pick my brain a little bit. But other than that, uh, nothing, nothing too crazy. It's just a good friend that I see around the way now. But, um, but yeah, no, he... Uh, but if I ever need any help or he needs any help of mine, then, you know, uh, we're just a phone call away. Never would have thought that we would have had this type of a conversation in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure talking to Patrick. Uh, by the way, the tournament is running smooth. I have to say that I'm tied for ninth right now. <clears throat> I still got a little work to do, but we're on our way. Uh, strong. Uh, but got, ladies and gentlemen, the key in this particular situation is if you have a passion for something, go for it, do it. You can be one of 97, 197, is that what you said? 127. 127. Uh, but that's important and key at this point in time because that's what he loves to do. Uh, we'll talk further and uh, thank you for watching. Yeah, oh yeah. Quick, and one other remark don't be afraid to make that jump. A lot of people are afraid to make the jump to better themselves. Don't, don't be afraid to do it. You have to take that shot. You heard it. I can't say anything better than that. Y'all heard it from him. Have a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs>
They worked with us uh, to get in, enrolled and registered in the tour, but they had a great interview as far as the background of their father and grandfather, Ted Rhodes. And these are pioneers that we need to make sure that we keep in mind of being able to play your private golf courses, your public munis and places like that. Uh, I'll just say this, I was impressed because he took clothes hangers as a caddy he wanted to play so bad he took clothes hangers to make them into clubs. Now, to me, that's dedication. And when people start, you know, looking back as to why you're playing golf, don't just play a sport just because you want to play it. Know a little history, know why you're doing it and go for it from there. So without anything else, make sure that you like and comment on Kamari Golf, both the Facebook page and the YouTube page. And you can always catch me on my regular site uh, on Facebook, Sean Bland. But we're trying to grow this so that we can get information out to golfers so that we can learn about not only the game of golf, but the history of golf. So like I said, got a few other interviews. I got another PGA professional that is in Nashville. He's about the same age as Patrick. and. He went to Mississippi State and he's bros, but you know, he is he is just as tenacious in golf and was very proud of him and his accomplishments. And he had, he's a director, I mean he's a golf professional at a, a golf course in Nashville. And that was good. We we're gonna go back and play that course pretty soon. But uh again, like and share and tune in periodically when you see us come up and I appreciate y'all tuning in and listening. Thank you.